This talk is part of an online commutative algebra course and will be a little bit more about stably free modules, um, except that, well, it will really be about the technique called the Eilenberg Mesa Swindle and some applications of this to the structure of free modules. So the first example of the Eilenberg Mesa Swindle is a proof that one is equal to zero. And the proof goes like this. What we do is we look at the series one minus one plus one minus one plus one and so on. And we can write this series in two ways. We can either write as one minus one plus one minus one plus one minus one, where we pair off elements like this. And you see this is zero and this is zero and this is zero. So the series is equal to zero. On the other hand, we can pair off the elements like this. So if we pair off these two elements, we get zero, and these two elements, we get zero, and so on. So this sum is equal to one. So we find one is equal to zero. Well, the obvious, obviously this is not a valid proof. So there's a problem. And it's not difficult to see what the problem is. The infinite sums are not well defined. Um, now, the Eilenberg Mazer swindle um, works in cases where you can get infinite sums that are well defined. And the same argument shows that if a plus b is equal to zero and infinite sums are well defined, and behave well. So behave well means that there's some sort of notion of the infinite sums being associative and commutative, which I'm not going to specify precisely. Anyway, it says that if a plus b is equal to zero, then a and b must both be zero. And you can, can see this by considering the infinite sum a plus b plus a, a plus b plus and so on. And this is equal to a plus b plus a plus b and so on. And you can bracket the terms in two different ways. So we can bracket them like this and we find the term is a. And we can bracket them like this and we find the sum is zero. So we can apply this whenever we can take infinite sums of things. And the first example I'm going to give has nothing to do with commutative algebra and it's a problem about knots. So we can take a sum of knots as follows. Suppose I've got a couple of knots. Um, let me try and suppose I've got a, a knot here. Um, um, so this is, I hope, a trefoil knot. And suppose I've got another knot here, which might look like this. Um, not very good at drawing knots. This is some something algebraic topologists know how to do. So how do I take the sum of these two knots? Well, that's quite easy. What I do is I cut here and I cut there and I join them up like this. And that gives me a sum of two knots. And um, obviously you can take sums of any numbers of knots and we can also note the sum is commutative. And we can see this as follows. So suppose I've got a, um, a little knot here, um, which might go like this. And suppose I've got another knot. Um, let's try and take a slightly different knot so it's not quite trivial. They're, they're commutative. Um, so there, I think, is a figure of eight knot if I've got it right. And what I want to do is to show that um, this is equal, that, that I can exchange the order of these. And it's kind of obvious how to do this. What I do is I make the first knot really small and I make the second knot really big. Um, like so. And now I can take hold of the first knot and just slide it along through this big knot and move it to the other side. So the sum is commutative 
And it's also fairly obvious that it's in some sense associative. Um, the other nice thing is that infinite sums are defined. So suppose I've got a knot, and I'm just going to draw this as a box with the letter A on it because I'm getting tired of misdrawing knots. And suppose I've got another knot B. And suppose I've got another knot C. I can draw the knot C even smaller, and I can have an even smaller knot, and so on. And I can continue making these knots smaller and smaller. Each one might be half the size of the next one. And I can connect them all up and get an infinite sum of knots. Um, notice that this is infinitely fine for continuous knots. Um, this doesn't work for smooth knots because at the limit point here, the knot is obviously going to be not going to be smooth. Um, but we won't worry too much about that. Um, so this is one of the constructions why, why um, topological manifolds are kind of different from smooth manifolds. There are some constructions you can do for topological manifolds that just aren't smooth, and this is one of them. And now let's show that knots cannot cancel. So suppose I've got two knots, um, A and B, like this. So suppose A and B cancel. Um, it sort of seems pretty unlikely that by taking a knot and by adding another knot, you, 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 you can eliminate both knots, but um, that's not the same as a mathematical proof. We want to understand why knots don't cancel. And what we do is we just sum A plus B plus A plus B, and so on. We take an infinite sum of these two knots. And now on the one hand, you can pair off the terms like this. So, so I can pair off these two and these two and these two, and they all cancel out. So by doing this green pairing, we say that this is just the, 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 the sort of circle, the, the trivial knot. On the other hand, I can pair them off like this, just as in the, um, so I pair those two and those two and those two, and we see everything pairs out except the knot A. So I'm left with, with just the knot A. So we see that if, if A and B cancel out, then in fact, the knot A is the trivial knot. And of course, the knot B is also trivial. Um, so that's a topological example of the Eilenberg Mazer swindle. The, the, the topological version is usually called the Mazer swindle because Barry Mazer introduced this idea um, in a slightly different context. And the algebraic version of the Eilenberg McLean Swindle that I'm now going to do is named after Eilenberg, who introduced it. So um, the first application is the following problem. Um, when we defined M to be stably free, um, we said this was equivalent to saying M plus R to the N is free for N finite. And one question to ask is, why do we take n finite? What happens if we take n infinite? So suppose we allow n to be infinite. Well, if we allow n to be arbitrary, then we find m plus r to the n free, n anything, turns out to be just equivalent to m being projective. So this isn't giving us a, 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 a new concept. So we can see this in um, two steps. First of all, if M plus something free is free, this implies M is projective. And the reason for this is that any direct summand of a projective module is automatically projective. Um, which is very easy to check. And free modules are projective, so M is a direct sum and of a free module, so it's projective. Um, the part that involves the eilenberg lane swindle is we want to show that if M is projective, then M plus some free module is free. And we can see this as follows. First of all, if M is projective, this implies that m plus n is free for some n. 
That's because we can just find a free module mapping onto M and then this splits because M is projective. So, so M is a direct sum and of a free module. Um, and now we use the eilenberg maclean swindle and we look at M plus N plus M plus N plus M and so on. And we can divide this up in two ways. First of all, if we divide it up like this, we see that this is free. On the other hand, we can divide it up like this. And this green bit is free. And we've got M left over. So this is equal to M plus a free module. So we found a free module of infinite rank such that M plus this free module is free. Um, so that's why we add the condition that um, this number N here is finite in the definition of stably free, because if we don't, it's just projective modules. Um, next, I want to um, use the eilenberg mclean swindle to um, show that stably free of modules of infinite rank are free. Um, so I haven't actually quite defined what the rank of a, of a stably free module is, but what I mean is if M plus R to the N is isomorphic to some infinite sum of copies of R. If, you, if you're a set theorist you know there are different sorts of infinity, I just don't care. Uh, this can be any sort of infinity. Um, so suppose that M plus some finite rank module is an infinite sum of copies of R, and we want to show that M is actually free. What we do is we look at the map from R to the infinity to M plus R to the N. And now we can find some um, finite number of copies of these that map onto this finite module R to the N. So, so we can think of this as being R to the infinity plus R to the M is isomorphic to M plus R to the N, where this map here is now onto with, with, with M and N both finite. Um, um, next, um, um, we can take all the basis elements of this and just subtract um, ele suitable elements of this in order to make the image of this free module lie inside M. So we can now reduce this to R infinity plus R to the M goes to M plus R to the N, where this is onto, and this map here is into. And there may also be a map from R to the M to M, of course, and so on. Um, well, we've now got a map from R to the M, um, which maps onto R to the N. So because R to the N is free and therefore projective, this splits. So we can write R to the M is equal to X plus R to the N, um, where we can um, take this um, submodule X is going to map into M. So what we do is we find that M is equal to R to the infinity plus X, where where X is stably free, X plus R to the N is R to the M. So now let's use the eilenberg maclean swindle to show that this implies M is actually um, free. So what we do is we look at um, X plus R to the N plus X plus R to the N plus X plus R to the N and so on. Um, um, and um, let's just add R to the infinity to this. And um, on the one hand, and, and this is um, free because X plus R to the N is R to the M. So this is a free module. I mean, the, the, the whole lot is a free module, not just the R to the infinity. And um, on the other hand, we can, uh, so, so it's a free module because we're, we're, we're pairing it off like that, I guess. And on the other hand, 
we can pair it off like this. And again, we know that r to the n plus x is just r to the infinity. So, um, 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 this is just x plus um, r n plus x to the infinity plus r to the infinity, which is just um, x plus r to the infinity, which is m. So we found m is isomorphic to this module here, which is free. Um, so um, uh, next lecture, we will be looking at um, um, locally free modules, which are more or less the analog of vector bundles um, in topology.